Hey, James, welcome to the uh, the coaching call. What is your name? What do you do? And what's your problem? My name is James Blakemore. I live in Midland, Texas. I'm a serial entrepreneur. Uh, I've done a number of different things, but my primary business has been a family business that I've owned with my two siblings. And it's an oil and gas, primarily oil and gas company, but it also has a large ranch. And uh, the problem is my brother surreptitiously bought out my sister without my, you know, surreptitiously means without my knowing about it, which gave him two thirds control of the company. And so what he's been doing, what he's doing now is uh, he's taking all the money. I mean, he's basically paying himself and his kids exorbitant salaries, which leaves very little money to be distributed to me, a one third stockholder. And he has uh, made it very unpalatable for anybody to buy me out. He wants, he basically wants me to sell to him at a vastly reduced price, uh, which is looking at current values versus what he's offered me somewhere around uh, 40% of what it's worth. And, uh, you know, for example, the company made a couple million, uh, the, between the two of them, I think we made like $4 million last year and I got a hundred thousand dollars out of it. So. Well, there's, there's um, family businesses are absolutely phenomenal when they work and a real pain in the ass when they don't. So you, you've you've got a you've got an issue there. Um, was there any kind of checks put in at the beginning of this? Like, was this a company that you guys started, or was it an inherited business? It was an inherited business. All right. Okay. So when you start your own businesses, you could have put in those checks right at the beginning, but you've inherited it, so you've inherited any kind of baggage. And also, let's be honest: when you've got a company that was maybe established, you know, generations ago then it wouldn't have the, the balances and the checks that were put in place if you would have started today with the new, not only technology, but the new restrictions, the new ideas, the new concepts of legal parameters. All right. Well, so so you you're contacting. So if I can understand, do you want to stay in business with him or do you want to get out? Um, I would like to get out subject to the use of our family ranch for you know the rest of my life. Okay, use or ownership? Use. I use. Okay, to who owns the my interest in it for with a, a you know just a limited use for the rest of my life? Well, I, you know. So the ranch is currently owned between you and your brother because your sister's out of the picture now, isn't she? That's correct. It's right, owned so, the corporation. He owns two thirds of the stock, and I own one third of the stock. And the ranch is covered in the company. Yes. Right. Okay. So you want to stay there um, and until your dark days. Um, so you want that, but you'd also like to sell out all of your stock now. Yes. Right. Okay. And how is the communication between you and your brother? Strained. Okay. There's a difference between non-existent and strained. So at least you have in that communication. So if you contact him, while it may be friction while it may be cold it's still happening so there, there's i'm not saying hey we should uh you know wave the flag of joy but at least he's not a dead duck yet what is going to ignite him to want to have a conversation with you that would get you nearer your goal what is it from his perspective ignore yours we know yours but what's going to make him excited to talk to you um uh he wants me gone. He wants me gone at, at a ridiculously low price. Um, All right. So you're a headache to him. Yes. All right. Okay. I'll ask this question straight, ab- uh, straight at the beginning. Could you be more of a headache? Oh, yes. Right. Okay, good. So we got that one. Okay. <laughs> so we know the end goal is that you want to stay there, but you want to be out of the stock and the ownership. He wants you out of the stock because he wants to own the whole thing himself. Is there enough liquidity in the company for him to be able to release you at the money um, valuation that you want? Oh, it would be tough. He would, you know, he's got a, when he bought my sister out, he took on a bunch of debt. Um, And uh, right now, if the company, you know, there, right now, the good thing is that there's no debt on the company. So So he he, paid off that debt. Yeah, he could. No, no, he owns the debt personally. But the corporation owns the a, a sixteen million dollar ranch 
free and clear. So he's, you know, he could borrow against that to get the money to buy me out. But that would only put him into more debt. So we're all about pain versus pain. So at the moment, yeah. there's no pleasure point there. Um, so he's in personal debt um, himself that he used to buy out the, the your sister, correct? Correct. All right. If he raised money on the ranch, does he own the ranch or does his company or does the company own the ranch? Uh, the company owns the ranch, but he would be 100 percent owner of the company. Yeah, he would be. But my point is, if he if he wants to buy you out, he's got to take that liability himself. If the company buys you out, then the company owns that stock. So it's an ownership situation, isn't it? Yes. So what I'm trying to say is that if he buys you out, he's got to, if, for him to buy you out and own 100% of the company, he can't buy you out from company money. He's got to buy you out from personal money so that he personally owns the stock that now owns the company. Is that making sense? Yes, it does. A lot of people get confused when it's the company money versus the personal money. So, all right, so he's got to, he's already in debt with your sister. Mike, I always look for where is the pain point here. He's already in debt with your, um, you know, he's already in debt to have got your sister's equity. At the moment, he can suffer the pain of you because he's no longer in further debt. If he had the cash, then it would be a Band-Aid. It would be like, there's your money, sod off. But he doesn't need to do that, does he? No. And, and Okay, so now we're getting somewhere. We've got to generate, if you can't have a good conversation with someone, then you've got to have a bad one. Um, and so at the moment, I'm getting the idea, and we've actually conversed on this in the past, so we should let the viewers know that. Um, you you are an aggravation to him. While you have a conversation, you're not creating him any more debt to him. He's able to pay payroll you out of the profit margin. So he's able to control those kind of elements. So he's got no increased liability financially and debt with you being in the company. If you were out of the company, he would now have a debt. But he would have you out of his ass. He would have that pain gone. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel about being a bigger pain in the ass? I'm in. All right. Um, the conversations you've had, with him, have you declared very openly, this is the valuation of the company, this is what I want? Yes. Have you worked out doing a lump sum and then a payout? I've made him, uh, we've got several offers. We've got, gone through a number of back and forth offers. And in fact, uh, you know, we sent him another offer right before Christmas. So we're waiting on, see, waiting on him to come back. I don't anticipate him uh, coming back, but he might. I mean, he may be tired of messing with me. I've told him I want to get this thing done. I want to, you know, I don't want to be a, uh, I don't want to be any, you know, I don't want to be a badass, but, you know, I've basically laid the, laid the groundwork out that, you know, if we go to war, it's going to be ugly. Yeah, the trouble is when you go to war, the first thing that happens is you bring in all of your inventory, you bring in all of your attorneys, and all of a sudden you're just sitting there shelling out a check. Okay, yeah. so no one wants to be doing that. When it's an all-out battle, there's blood. So yeah. at the moment, what we've got is an aggravation. So Mike, and you've made it very clear. I, I've got to admit, the way that it's going now, you've made a number of attempts. Now, I'm looking at it from your side of the fence. From his side of the fence, your valuation could be unreasonable. Have you considered that your requests may be unreasonable in this current market? Actually, we, you know, where he's he's using a uh, a valuation that was established when he bought my sister out, and the company. When was, was that? Uh, it was the uh, end. It was the end of seventeen. Okay, lots changed. And, so three years ago. Yeah, and the, the company's become more valuable since then. Right. Okay, is there a way? Has an independent valuation been done on the company? Not, not recently. Not since back then. I would it be expensive to do that? Yes, it would be. Right. Okay. Would the company be willing to do it? No. So it'd have to be a personal thing. I'd have to spend the money myself. All right. Okay. I'm not going to ask you how much it's going to cost or how much you got, but could you do that? 
it'd be, it, it would, it would really dig into my funds. I suspect we're talking about nearly, you know, somewhere between somewhere between 50 and a hundred thousand dollars to get it done. All right. And that's, you know, that's, I need, yeah, I need that money in other places. My question, and I'm just trying to line up the dominoes here is if a contract could be done, if basically a, a, an LOI, a letter of intent could be drawn up that based on an independent valuation, we agree to X, Y, Z of that valuation. Um, and he was to commit to that at the beginning, then you've kind of got the chicken, you know, the, 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 the horse and cart in the right yeah. order. Um, I, based on our last conversation and the conversation we're having here, he doesn't seem too keen. And at the same time to whatever the valuation comes back. And of course the valuation is going to come back in your favor, because we're talking about a company that's had four years profit since the last valuation. So he's sitting there going, well, I don't want another valuation because it's going to show the company's worth more and I'm going to have to pay more. And I'm going to have to get in personal debt to be able to do that. So where is the pain that we can alleviate from him? And that pain becomes you. How could you create more waves? How could you be a bigger problem? And could it affect him without it affecting the company? The, uh, the two ways really that I have at my disposal to create more waves for him are to bring potential to bring people to the table who want to buy me out. I don't okay. think I'm pretty sure he does not want a partner. And the, the more I, the more unpleasant the person I bring to the table, the more he would be in do, and his, the better his incentive to, uh, uh, to do business with me. And the other, yeah. the other way is to sue him. It's just to get, is to unload the, you know, it's to turn the, lo the attorneys loose on him and engage in, in litigation, which I know he doesn't want. He doesn't, he's not interested in paying, you know, six figures, seven figures in legal fees. But could he? Uh, he could, but he's, he's, I, he's in trouble already. I think he could, I don't think he'd want to. I think my he, point is though, there's a number of situations and this is where it's sadly the, uh, the legal system of, of uh, America, he could litigate you out of pocket. You know, it could be a case of before he's even won, if you've run out of money, then you can't proceed any further. So he could be weighing it up. Well, okay, I've I, I've got to pay you X, but if I use Y to to you know sue you or to counter your sue, then that Y may end up costing less than the X just to get you out of the situation. And then I've picked up your stock on on cents on the dollar. The one good thing I have done is I've negotiated an, re an arrangement with a law firm to uh, represent me on a contingency basis. Right. Okay. Good. Okay. Right. Okay. So now we're, look, I hate going down this tactic because as soon as you start getting your fists out, as I say, someone, you both get a slap. I've never, I've never known a fight in my life where, you know, one person comes out unscathed. Yeah. Um, so it's going to hurt both sides of the fence. And everyone needs to know that when you get in the ring, you're both going to get slapped. Um, but I really like the anchor. I really like, and again, it's being horrible here. The 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 upset he would have by having someone else come into his sandpit that he doesn't want to play with. You know, I can really see that. Have you have you called that out that that's actually a, a, a potential? Yes, I'm actually working with some people on that right now. Have you told your brother? No. Okay. Well, so he knows, he knows that I am looking for buyers. He knows that I am, and he knows that I've talked to some fairly unpleasant people already. Uh, but he's just, you know, he's betting on the fact that nobody's going to buy me out because of what he, you know, the condition he's put my position in. <clears throat> All right. So you've got a offer out to him, and you're waiting for a response on that offer. Yes. Okay. So do you have a deadline on when you needed the response by? Did you put that into the uh, uh, offer? I don't think we did that. No, we're expecting it after the, probably after the first of the year. His attorney and, said it would be after the first of the year. And so. that makes sense. And that makes sense. So let's say that by the 15th of January, um, and I can't see how it wouldn't, but 
if by the 15th of January you don't have a response, then you've got to follow up and go, we need a response in the next five days. Okay. So you've got to put a deadline on that. Okay. Yeah. If you get your offer in the first week and it's getting closer, then you go for a counter. Okay. If the counter comes back and it's got no further and you're not happy with the offer and you're not willing to accept the offer, then you've got to go and start playing the, 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 the pain. You've got to go, look, we've tried multiple offers. You haven't liked any of them. The recent one was unacceptable to us, both, um, both on your counter um, and mine to you. Therefore, I've told you before, I need to end this. You can play the age and health card. You can go, look, at my age, I don't want to be playing this game anymore. So I've had enough. I mentioned to you before that I'd be looking at other people. We now have someone that's at the table and we're going to commence uh, conversations with that person and you can take it up with them once I sell my position with them. Now, getting having having a fight with someone that you know is, is uncomfortable, but hey, you know them. Mm -hmm. You know, you can dangle them enough. Getting someone else to take that play, that's a fresh opponent. And that opponent comes in with different tactics and different ideas and different power. Okay. He's not going to, he's, it's going to be easier for him to control you. And especially at the end of the day, your brothers, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you, you, it gets to that sooner or later it's going to get down to, Hey, it's, we're blood. Okay. But getting a corporation owning that stock, that takes personality out of it. And yeah. that I can imagine would be something he would not want to be involved in. Question is, are you prepared to be that person? I'm not sure I understand your question. Ask that again, please. Are you prepared to be that painful, aggravating person to your brother? Yeah. Then, then I think we have, I think we have a, um, a, a structure. I think we have a, a route here. You need to find out just after um, January what the offer is. If it's within ballpark, and you can suffer it. Take it right off into the sunset. Stay at your aunt. Good for you. If you can't, you counter and say, look, I need a response on this within 10 days. If the counter comes back and there's no movement nearer to where you will settle, then you've got to confront and put the cards down and go, look, I don't want to sue you. Because again, suing you is still person for person. And again, they may litigate you out of court. You may be bluffed out of the situation. But if you can turn around and go, I don't want to sue you. But I do have someone now sitting at the table. Uh, I told you I wanted to get out of it. I'm going to be uh, conversing with this company, and I'll let you know um, who owns my stock as of then. Well, he has a right of first refusal, so I have to I have to give him the right to to match the offer, which is still good. I mean, yeah, well, exactly, exactly. Who gives a shit? That's absolutely fine because yeah. you've got right of first refusal. But if you turn around and go, right, I need X, and he goes, no, I'm not going to do that. Fine, giving you first right of refusal. These boys will. So, yeah, he's going to match it, but he's going to know. And he's going to know, let's be blunt, that it's going to be cheaper to get you out of the picture than a partner who just comes in fresh. Yep. How serious is the other team, or is it a bluff? We're uh, not really sure yet. I mean, we're in preliminary negotiations right now. All right. Okay. All right. Because yeah, that's the other thing. When you, when you walk into that kind of battle... You can't kind of cry wolf, um, you know, twice. So yeah. you, you've got to be, they've got to be very serious. Um, now, let's be serious. They're probably not going to give you the best yeah. because they're going to know about the situation. But as long as they give you better than your brother, you've won. Yeah. Um, so yeah. But your brother's got to be aware of that. And so if you, if you can do, as you're saying, get in there, offer. If it's unacceptable, counter 10 days. If that's wrong, declare that you don't want to. And this is a good way of putting it. I don't want to sue. I do not want to get into a legal battle. It doesn't, it doesn't benefit either of us mentally or financially. And it can be drawn out forever. But I do have someone that's now at the table and we're entertaining an offer. Of course, I will adhere to your 
um, conditions and give you first right of refusal. But should you find that in it unacceptable, then I will be proceeding with this other company. I'll, uh, I'll be chatting with you in the future. Mm -hmm. That may be the warning shot they need. I am concerned about his debt. Okay, yeah. because if if he had if he had a large cash flow, then you'd be you'd be a bee sting. You'd be an irritation that he'd want to get rid of. But the amount of do you know how much debt he's carrying from your sister's purchase? Uh, roughly, but not. I mean, I, I don't know. No, I don't know exactly. I'm wondering how how much pain he's actually in personally. Okay, because it may be a situation that he can't do more. You know, and and that would that's a situation there. You know, he may with I don't know how well his sister negotiated the deal out, but he may have other debts as well that you may not be aware of. And he may just not be able to do what he wants to do. Yeah. Um, but I'm I can't. I'm aware of that. And uh, I would be uh, I would be willing to make it easy on him. I would be willing to uh, to offer him very, very favorable terms to uh, because of the way I'm set up. I'm I'm well, anyway. He, I think that he could, uh, I, I, you know, I don't, I don't want to, if we can come to a deal, I don't want to, I don't want to destroy it. I want to be, you know, I want to be a, uh, I, I want to get out of the trap, but as far as I, you know, he can keep some of the cheese. And yeah. uh, I don't so you're want not trying, you're not trying to, you're not trying to bankrupt him. You, in, no. in, in, fact, in fact, far from it, you're, you're looking at an opportunity of giving him the company that he can pass on to his legacy. That's exactly right. Without anybody else, you know, playing in the sand pit. And well, the you say that you're looking to give him good terms and conditions. Has that been highlighted within the offer that you've given him? Not yet. Not yet. So that's another uh, card you've got in your pocket. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So really it all comes down to how things play out in the next five, well, six days when we just get over into the new year. Yeah. Right. Okay. This uh, this broadcast will will no doubt go out after that. Okay. So cool. keep us posted. So yeah, we can put a little footnote on the fact of you know following this broadcast, James actually blah blah blah. So you know we'll actually be able to do a result in that. Um, but yeah, I think you're right. Whenever you've got whenever you've got a family situation, that always hurts a bit because even when you don't like your family, and they say you can't pick your family, but even when you really don't like them they still get to you you it's know and you still every now and then get that that twang and that pain um a lot of people know that i have a very um uh strange relationship with my family um but you can't pick them okay <laughs> but that's still family so you've got that one i love the fact that you're not trying to hurt him you're actually trying to provide him to be in complete control yeah. But you've got to do it at your benefit. And again, we're worried about the uh, debt that he's in. But again, you're you're offering him a way out of that by making it easy for him. So, and comfortable. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see what the beginning of January comes up. Do you have any, um, when was the last time you spoke to him? Actually physically spoke to him? Um, a week before Christmas. Good. So you're speaking with him and not his attorneys. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I met with him. He went to the attorney. The attorney sent us an offer. The offer was not acceptable, so we countered. My, my attorney, and this is all, this is informal verbal offers right now. So my attorney talked to, talked to his guy again, and they said, uh, you know, he would make, you know, he would communicate the information to Bruce, and, but it probably wouldn't be until after the first of the year. Okay. So, that's where we are right now. In your conversation with him, um, I would imagine it's civil. Um, yeah. Is it borderline friendly? Uh, I would say it's cordial. Okay. It's, yeah, it, borderline, it might be inching towards the border, but I don't think it's on the borderline of friendly yet. Right. I'd like it to get there, you know, and I'm, you know, I've been over backwards to get it there. But um but we're not in we're not in an we're not in an aggressive foul mouth no. communication. All right. So no. there's still there's okay, so you've still got the ability to save this. Yeah. Um which is which is good. 
I'm a great believer that everything is in the tonality of the conversation. So the fact that you're having a conversation and the tonality is cordial and nearer the friendly than it is the ferocious, that's actually a good thing, okay? Because you, you, you've got somewhere to go and you haven't got to run away from the ferocious side. That's wonderful news. Um, what is your – are there any backups? Are there any kind of like second um, – anything out there that could possibly uh, torpedo – this uh, uh this offer is there any other players out there now i don't want to i don't want to cherry pick but sometimes you get members of the family that can, can like you know be 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 whispering snakes in the ear john oh you don't want to do that oh, don't trust him um are there any of those situations going around or was it just you and him it's just, well he's got uh he's got two daughters who have husbands and families and i don't know i mean i think he's the leader of the pack I don't think I don't think either one of them are trying to would torpedo me. Uh, as, as far as I know, I have good relationships with them. We're not talking right now because he's kind of pulled them into his corner and um, uh, picking. I don't, you know, I haven't I haven't tried picking up the phone and talking to them. I think that would be per, perceived as trying to go around behind his back. Um, I don't Potentially, know seeing as he's pulled him into the camp, but also, do they do they benefit from that? Do they benefit from what is currently still your business? Yes. Right. Okay. So that that's sitting there at the moment, not wanting to kind of like you know rock the boat too much because this is also their paycheck and their yeah. future. So you can appreciate it from that side. That po- they would probably want nothing more than for you two to get on, whether you be in the company or out of the company. But at this moment in time, they may be just being a little bit quiet just to protect their paycheck. Yeah. It's a bit cold, but you've got to look at that as, as well. Okay, so you haven't got anyone that's got his ear that could possibly be sabotaging you. So it is just down to you two. Yeah, pretty much. That's it. Yeah. Fine. Well, James, I want you to keep us posted just after um, January. I want you to keep us updated. I want to put a footnote on this conversation to see what tact you had to go with next to potentially see how it went. And then, hey, maybe we'll get you back on for a follow-up just to see how you uh, rejoiced to bought your yacht. I'd love to. I'd love to. <laughs> I'd love to put this to bed so I can afford to come up to your Sims distillery in New York. Yeah, I look forward to it. James, I'd love to see you there, pal. Thank you very much for taking your time. I'm hoping this helps a lot of people. Family businesses are tough. And that's why when you start a family business, I just started one with my son. And you've almost got to do kind of like a prenup formula, you know, so that it does protect against future things. It's not out of um, uh, discourse or or unlove or anything like that. It's out of protection. You never know what's going to happen. So family businesses... As I say, are phenomenal when they work and painful as hell when they don't. So, James, I wish you all the best, and I look forward to hearing how it comes out. Can I make a? Can I give a little bit of advice, please? Uh, if anybody's anticipating or or contemplating getting into a family business, get all of the rancor outside done in advance. Well, why do you want to put that kind of provision in? Well, why do you you know? Well, and put all the put all of the provisions in that were not put into ours because when ours was put together, the legal climate, the, the laws and the, and the regulatory climate was completely different. And all the protections were in place in a regulatory sense. But now what happened was the laws changed and the Supreme Court in the state of Texas changed some laws which removed the protections that minority stockholders had. And now I'm left hanging in the wind. And so make sure if you're anticipating putting together a family business, cut, dot all the top, dot all the I's, cross all the T's, and think of the worst thing that can happen in advance and then cross that bridge. That's fantastic advice, James. Thank you very much for being willing to share it and also for that final advice. Really appreciate it, mate. Look after yourself. You're very welcome. Talk to you soon, my friend. Bye. Bye-bye. Hey, this is Steve Sims, and I hope you liked that episode of Being Coached by Steve Sims. Subscribe over here, watch some other cool videos over here, or for your chance to be coached by me for the YouTube series, join here at simsdistillery.com.